U.S. Farm Report, a public information program brought to you in the interest of agriculture, rural business, and the well-being of our nation by members of the National Farmers Organization in this area and others interested in having American agriculture receive cost of production plus a reasonable profit. The American farmers and ranchers are building a brighter future for agriculture through the National Farmers Organization, the organization that awoke America and represents the leadership of agriculture. U.S. Farm Report presents a special guest, Robert Mankey, head of beef marketing for the National Farmers Organization. Here now is W.W. W. Butch Swain, director of NFO Research and Public Information. It's indeed a pleasure to come into your homes and visit for a short while about the tremendous progress that we're making in the bargaining efforts to obtain fair prices in the marketplace for the American farmer. And I have as my guest here today one of the outstanding people in the bargaining field that not only is getting farmers a price, but has been getting a farmers a better price for some time now. I have with me today, at this time, a special friend of mine, one of the outstanding leaders in agriculture, and one of the outstanding people as far as bargaining for fair prices for farmers is concerned, Mr. Robert Mankey from Arlington, Wisconsin, who heads up the beef department of the NFO collective bargaining efforts at the Corning headquarters in Corning, Iowa. And Bob, it's a pleasure to have you with me at this time because I know that you've got a good message here for the folks. You're going to be able to tell them what you're doing in beef bargaining, and this is important because beef is the number one meat of the nation and of the world. Well, Butch, this is correct. And we have got tremendous problems as far as beef is concerned. One of the things that I've noticed in working in different states is that it doesn't make any different what difference what state you go into that the problems are relatively the same. We have always been under the uh, question, they've always thrown this out at us, well, if you was in a different area, the problems, you wouldn't have this problem. But just in one of the recent tours that I had down in Texas, and I think that this is important to bring out at this time, that we now are down in areas, way down in Texas here, where we have cattle feeders that normally would produce anywhere from eight to 10,000 head of cattle annually that are now joining the NFO, that their problems down there are very similar to our problems that we have here in the Midwest. And grouping this production together so that it can be sold in a unit is actually the answer to the farmer's problem at the present time. Well, Bob, I know you've made tremendous progress in the beef bargaining fields, and I know that you have many more plans in the very near future that will be put into gear, uh, and gradually this price has increased, and I know that most everybody realizes that, that the cull cow price is much better compared to fat cows now than uh, fat cattle are, and would you want to tell us a little bit about this or how you succeeded? I know that you're mostly responsible, more responsible than any other man in the nation for making this possible. Well, this was very easy, providing you get farmers and producers and ranchers to cooperate. And one case that was brought out uh, very explicitly was last July up in North Dakota. There was an extreme drought area in approximately 20 counties. And every packer in the Midwest was going up in this area to get a load of cattle. And it was having a very much of a price depressing effect on the total market. Now, a 20 county area should not be able to influence a nation's market. But what they were doing was that this area was supplying all of these cattle. And this was just enough of an incentive and enough of a, of a start where they could call it a, a liquidation of livestock that this had a price depressing effect over the whole nation. Well, we fortunately at that time were holding meetings in these four states, North Dakota, South Dakota, Minnesota, and Wisconsin. 
And we just asked these people in three other states of Minnesota and South Dakota and Wisconsin to hold their cows for two weeks. In North Dakota, we grouped these cattle together and moved them right out of the area. With this little effort of only four states working together, we raised the cattle price nationwide $2 a hundred. So every farmer here today that's listening to this program that sold the cow received $20 more per animal because they had friends in those four states that was cooperating together in marketing. If you can have this much of an impact in four states, just think what we can have when it is this nation, nationwide in scope. And talking of nationwide, if the camera would come in close, I'd like to show a little progress report. I know you know it, Bob, but a lot of them out of TV land don't realize the scope that we're over now. The NFO now extends from the Atlantic Ocean to the Pacific Ocean, clear across the nation, starting up in Maine, down through Vermont, New Hampshire, uh, Massachusetts, New York, New Jersey, and Pennsylvania, westward into Washington and Oregon, and down into California, and from the Canadian border up here, clear into Texas, to the Gulf of Mexico, and over in this area from Michigan, clear into Alabama, and on down into Georgia and Florida, with only a very few states that are now uh, not under the NFO banner. So I think as you spoke of Texas, I think a lot of people out in TV land don't realize that we've been in Texas for quite some time. And recently, in visiting with one of the people down there, he said that in Texas, he'd never been any place in NFO territory that where the attitude was so good as it was in Texas. And most certainly, the tremendous sign-up that's taking place in California. And I'd like to point out to the listening audience that in California, Although you don't think of California as a corn-producing state, the very first meeting that was held in California, the number of farmers that enrolled in NFO membership accounted for 15,000 acres of irrigated corn land. And over 2 million bushels of corn was signed under the banner of NFO, the very first night, the first meeting in California. Bob, I think, uh, we'll get back to your neat end of it, but I did think that this was important to show the people the scope of our organization right off the bat. But we are a going concern in the bargaining efforts, and I know that you told me for the Western ranchers that sheep would be relatively easy to bargain with. Uh, so why don't you go ahead with the beef bargaining efforts here, because this is the thing that's important in some of these big states of beef producers. One of the things that I'd like to bring out at this time, and it's relatively simple, and these are some of the basic things that farmers and ranchers and cattlemen have to understand before they can reach a solution to their problem. And I'm going to pose a situation that is uh, so simple that uh, a lot of people might not think it important. But say there were four packers in this United States and there was only four head of cattle. If you gave each packer one head of cattle, there would be no more incentive to raise a price, although the supply could be real short, than it would be if he was operating at full capacity. Why? Because each packer has his portion of the nation's supply. The only way that you could increase the price would be to Farmers go into this plant, and if you group two head together, which would be 50% of the supply for that day, then you can bargain for a price. And it is not the law of supply and demand that will set a price, but it is the block selling. Right now, over all of NFO territory, we are grouping together livestock, whether it be a rancher or a large feeder with 10 to 40,000 head of cattle, and we have those members in our organization, or whether it be a man with 40 acres with 10 head or two head of cattle. 
We all have the same problem. As one man in Texas, it's a large feeder, said, my profit is down to where I feel that if I get one penny per head per day, this is what I've got with normal losses, death losses, and expenses. So a size will not get you or give you the answer to your solution or solution to your problem. The only legal structure that we have is the capra volstead Act, where farmers can group together and have a strong bargaining association. With this association, we can match the power of the chain stores and gain equality, equal. And the power of the chain stores have increased tremendously over the last, well, since the end of World War II, to where they're selling over 90% of the food. So if we're going to gain equality, we have to be strong. Get on the same equal plane, and then farmers and ranchers can start solving their problems. This is the only legal method known in the United States. We right now, Butch, are getting into the position within 72 hours in any part or all of the United States to have systematic selling and marketing. We go right down to the county level, each man listing his production. With this production listed, we bargain, whether it be for 10,000, 20,000, or 30,000 head of cattle a day. This is bargained for, and then the members decide through the democratic farm organization that we have. They ratify or reject. And this is a way that the farmers and ranchers can maintain control of this production. Control of the production right to the marketplace, but also have something to say about the price. But with this method going in all over nationwide, we intend to be able to implement this within a time limit of 72 hours. At this point, I feel we're getting right in the final marketing and bargaining stages. But. Right, and collective bargaining means farmers bargaining together and selling together. And in order to do this, you must have the method. <coughs> now, the Capra Volstead Act has given the farmers this legal right to bargain collectively since 1922. And it speaks of farmers and ranchers, nut and fruit growers and others that have this legal right to farm associations whereby they can bargain collectively in interstate, foreign commerce, or what have you. There's no holds barred as long as you're producers and producers only. And by bringing all groups together, Bob, by bringing the beef uh, producers, the sheep producers, and other commodities, this will assure a price for everybody. And I think that the fact that most people overlook is this, that collective bargaining has never failed for anyone. And collective bargaining is the backbone of our nation. Did you ever stop to realize that, well, I think the way it was, Bob, that Senator Capper put it most in the best words I've ever heard of when he proposed the Capra Volstead Act and they were working for it, he said, this will give the farmers and ranchers of the nation the same legal right to bargain collectively that is already enjoyed by the corporations. Lots of people don't realize that corporations bargain collectively. Labor bargains collectively. And if you're still against those two forms of collective bargaining, the United States government is the greatest form of collective bargaining that there is because our government in this free society in America runs on collective bargaining. The Vice President of the United States told us this in no uncertain terms. One time when we had a brief meeting with, with some of us and when he was at our convention, you remember? Uh, how he pointed this out, that don't let them kid you that it's un-American, that the American form of government is the greatest example of collective bargaining in the world. Well, I think you brought out one important point, uh, Butch, at this, at this uh, stage here. Because cattlemen no longer can solve the beef problems and say that they're separate 
from the rest of the other groups. Last fall, right around Thanksgiving time, I had a call from an Eastern packer. And he said, the beef prices are going to go down. And I said, why are you so sure of that? And he said, it's very simple. We're offering, or they're offering, uh, poultry at, and turkeys in, in, uh, especially at 24 cents a pound. Now, anybody knows that has been in the producing, agri or producing agricultural products will realize that this is below cost of production. Now, this was being used in order to lower the red meat prices. Now, some people will say that we have got to get, if, laws, if law and supply and demand was in operation, or evidently is too much meat. One of the things that is uh, so apparent, and since the year 1948, we haven't produced as much meat in this country as we have, con have consumed, yet we're having these low prices. So it comes back to this situation. The red meat, uh, the people that produce the red meat products are actually subsidizing. And as one chain store operator told me, he says, we lose money on poultry. Yet at the end of the week, we have a net profit on our meat counters. So what we're doing, we're subsidizing the poultry industry because we cannot run our business as a business should be run. To gain this power, we have to be able to tie things or the gains that we've made in bargaining down with a contract. <coughs> we are in the midst of an all commodity holding action, which grain has led off on. But a holding action in meat is going to be necessary in order to establish nationwide contracts so that people in all areas, breaking state lines, breaking natural barriers, that people in all of these areas will be using contracts to tie down the gains that we've made. And the holding action will be part of the program to implement this on a nationwide basis. This is why it is so necessary and it is needed right at the present time with the profit structure so low in agriculture that we tie this down at the present time. NFO cannot get you a price for your product, but we can bring the people together to give them a chance to use their power to price their product. And I would be a hypocrite if I came in, into your living room today and told you that I can get you a price or I can give you a price. <clears throat> all I can do and all NFO can do is work, bring the production together, and with this production bargain, so that we can give you a chance to price your own production. Bob, I would like to point out one thing, that the holding action is the businessman's way of putting a price tag on his merchandise, or a price tag on his product. And I'll repeat that again. The holding action is the businessman's way of putting a price tag on his product. And been the most misunderstood thing that there is, but all the rest of the nation has a holding action all the time. And in the final stages of the NFO collective bargaining program, we will bargain for the production a year in advance before it's produced. You give the opportunity to the members to bring this production together, bargain together and sell together. And through this method, and they're the final ones that make the sale on the sale, they make the final contract, the ratification of the contract. You give them this opportunity to set that price and then produce for that market. And in other words, the same way that automobiles set their market, their price ahead of time, 
You supply and demand for the benefit of the farmer, supply not only the product, but the price, and then work to fill the demand. This is true collective bargaining. We set the price in advance. And these are some of the things that are quite often overlooked. And some of you may not believe in holding actions, but remember, the Coke machine out on the corner, or wherever it might be, is all filled with fresh pop and it's refrigerated. But I'd like to see the people that don't believe in holding actions try to get a bottle of pop out of that for a buffalo head nickel or any type of nickel that they might have. And then after that, they'll believe in holding actions. And they'll realize, if they'll think a little bit, that the Main Street merchant has a holding action all the time, including the banker, the television station, the newspaper, and everybody else. And we're just becoming better businessmen and women. We're giving the American farmers the opportunity to become these better business people that we should have become 50 years ago. And remember, Bob, they tell you and I and the other farmers of the nation that, oh, you can't get a price for your beef because there's a surplus. Well, they eat it all, and they're importing 10% or more of it from other countries. And remember, Bob, from a businessman standpoint, or good business people on the part of the American farmer, American producer, American rancher, there's only one difference between a so-called surplus and an inventory, and that is putting a price tag on it. The price tag on the commodity, it turns it into an inventory overnight. Well, I know that as far as agricultural problems are concerned, and I hope that all producers of agricultural products will understand that the problems that they have are going to be solved by themselves. The producer is going to have to band together under collective bargaining. We've always heard of three major problems. One of them is price, the other uh, uh, price of the product. The other one, what would you do with a surplus? And the third is imports. Let's just take a minute and go over all of these and find out how uh, a collective bargaining program can solve these. Through block selling, uh, members getting together so that they can't divide individuals against individuals, and block sell, we can accomplish a price that is going to be necessary to maintain our operations in, in agriculture. Surpluses. How can an individual take care of a surplus? He can't do it. But if we, under a contract type of marketing, if we saw that we were getting too much, we could advise, and under a pricing structure, set a lighter weight as far as the animals being marketed. And with the lighter weight, reduce the tonnage. And we always have this one of imports. Now, I've seen both administrations, or not administrations, but both parties in power, and we still have imports coming into the country. So at this point, with the imports coming into the country, the producer had better take an interest in solving these problems, this problem. How do you do it? You contract for 100% of your production. Then if they need more, they import it. So there isn't any agricultural problem that can't be solved uh, with that can't be solved by the collective bargaining method. And this is the approach that people in agricultural production should be using now in order to try to solve their problem. Well, the bankers have used collective bargaining for years. They set the interest rate, one leads the field and another follows suit. The lawyers have done it for years. Before you're admitted to the bar, you agree to maintain certain minimum prices. And so on down the line, the automobile manufacturers set the price. They, through collective bargaining, they may not sit down at the table with the other people, but one le leads the field and the others follow suit. They have a contract with the people handling their product, the same way that we would have a contract with a certain processor handling our NFO beef production, Bob, or whatever it might be. And they don't run around and sell Chevrolet cars to some other man. They sell to the man they have the contract with. This way, we will do it. We will give marketing information and work with any and all processors that will cooperate 
to see to it that the farmers get a fair price. And like you pointed out, we'll have the contract for the production, we'll fill that contract, and as soon as we get enough production together, so that they can't fulfill their source of supply, I mean their, their market from other sources, then they're going to do just like nine of the nation's top packers now out of the top 15. They're going to come to the NFO. And I foresee in the near future that they're all going to come to the NFO because we have the supply. And as producers of farm commodities, we can put a price tag on these commodities through collective bargaining and solve the problem for not only for now, but for all time to come. It's just a matter of the farm producers of America, including the farmers, the ranchers, the nut and fruit growers, and this needs to be done on all commodities, because if you raise beef cows, Bob, up until the place that the tremendous profit in those, I predict that they'd fatten out all the dairy uh, cattle, and pretty soon there would be no, no milk for the people. They can talk about substitute milk all they want to, but there's no substitute for the nation's greatest food, milk. They can scare people all they want, but nevertheless, if you got the price of beef way up here, and the price of milk was way down, they're going to do just like a lot of dairy farmers have done. They're going to butcher those old dairy cows. By the same token, if you got the price of milk way up here, and the price of beef was way down here, a lot of these beef producers are going to get black and blue shins trying to squeeze a little milk out of them. And I know that now they're even trying to squeeze milk out of the sheep over in Australia and ship it to America. But folks, you have the opportunity, like you've never had before. It's time for the whole nation to go NFO. We can do this thing through collective bargaining. I like to hold up the membership sign of NFO and remind the producers of our nation that this is rapidly becoming the badge of distinction in American agriculture. Folks, send in your $25 now. Make the check payable to NFO, market membership. The time is now. Put it in an envelope. Mail it to membership, NFO, Corning, Iowa, or to the station to which you're listening. We'll send someone out to fill out your membership application in NFO to show your willingness to get American agriculture a price. Do it now. U.S. Farm Report. As presented, Robert Mankey, head of beef marketing for National Farmers Organization, and W.W. Butch Swain, director of public information. Member of the National Farmers Organization, invite you to tune in again next week at this time for more facts on agriculture and rural America, which is the gear wheel in our economy that produces the majority of our nation's new wealth.